So I've been a Mac fanboy for years now, but recently I got in the Dell XPS 14 and it's blown me away. I've actually been wanting to test out a proper Windows laptop for a while now that could potentially replace my MacBook Pro, and this is the closest I've gotten. Today I'll be talking about what the experience has been like as a Mac user using a Windows laptop, and hopefully help those of you on the fence about which laptop to buy get a better idea of which is worth your money. So the Mac I've been using is the M3 Pro. Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the base model with 18 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, retailing for $19.99. The XPS, on the other hand, is 2024's model with 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 1 terabyte SSD paired with an Intel Ultra 7 processor, and RTX 4050. This one is a bit more expensive at $24.99, but at least on paper, what you're getting for that price is actually a better value for money, in my opinion. If you wanted to spec out a 14 inch MacBook with a comparable 36 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte SSD, you're already looking to spend $25.99. This is also with still the base M3 Pro chip inside that has an 11 core CPU compared to 16 and the integrated 14 core GPU. While Macs are slowly getting better at gaming, it's not going to outperform the 4050, which actually can run basically any game you want, granted it's at low or medium settings. Now onto the build of these two, they have a comparable weight with the XPS coming in at 3.8 pounds and the Mac slightly lighter at 3.5 pounds. Both of these essentially feel the same and they're comfortable to carry around. The MacBook's enclosure is made of aluminum and feels very high quality, whereas the XPS is built with X and C aluminum. This honestly doesn't feel as high quality, but the main disadvantage to Mac is there's no tab to open it with one finger, though the hinge is still smooth. This white color on the XPS looks really clean, but there's also a graphite option if you prefer a darker design similar to that of the Space Black MacBook. Both of these laptops have a pretty slim design, so you can easily chuck these in a bag. Now, the big difference you'll notice with the XPS is above the keyboard. It has a fully touch function row, which I can't lie looks super cool, but practically I prefer having physical keys like on the Mac. It still feels weird just tapping on the glass, especially with the escape key. Now, onto the keyboards themselves, the XPS has a very soft feel that lacks the more tactile feel of the MacBook. I don't think it's bad by any means, but I personally prefer the feel of the Mac, as this mushy feel is much less comfortable after typing for hours. Both keyboards have a similar arrow key layout, but the XPS gives you larger left and right keys, which I find much easier to press. There's also the Copilot key to the left left, which I still think is a bit of a gimmick. I've used this maybe twice and didn't find it that useful. If I want to use AI, I'm probably going to use Claude or Perplexity, which are a quick search away. In the top right corner, both of the laptops have fingerprint sensors integrated into the power button, which I find very convenient and get a lot of use out of. I'd say they both feel about as responsive as the other, but the Mac's elevated design is a bit more comfortable to use. Now, when using laptops on the go, thermals is something you'll want to consider. The M3 Pro's fans very rarely kick on and the laptop stays cool most of the time, only ever getting warm for me while deep into an edit. The XPS on the other hand gets hot to the touch even just browsing the web, which makes using it in your lap somewhat uncomfortable. That aside, both machines have a very similar design that I think looks sleek. Each have speaker grills on the sides of the keyboard and a large area underneath for the trackpad. The Max trackpad is hard to beat. The XPS though has done a great job job at replicating the feel, and while not 100% there, it's more than good enough for me. There's a full glass design across the bottom, and in the trackpad portion, you get haptic feedback when you press. You can configure a two finger press to register as a right click, and perform gestures similar to those on Mac, making it easier to move throughout Windows. Now onto the displays, this is where things start to get really interesting. The MacBook has a 14.2 inch mini LED screen, with a 3023 by 1964 resolution. This gives it a 254 ppi pixel density. The XPS on the other hand has a 14.5 inch OLED display with a 3200 by 2000 resolution, giving it a slightly higher 260 ppi pixel density. Both of these screens look gorgeous, but this OLED looks fantastic. Blacks are of course going to be deep, and any content you watch on here is going to look fantastic. 
work. I haven't found brightness to be an issue, but if you're working outside in a bright environment, it would probably be a lot harder to use. What's even nicer about the display though is its touchscreen. I don't use this a ton, but it's honestly kind of cool to have every now and then. Windows isn't really built for touch devices, but for things like scrolling an article, it's kind of nice. Now on the ports, usually Windows laptops have better selections, but in this case, the Mac actually wins. The Mac has three Thunderbolt 4 ports, an SD card slot, HDMI 2.1, and an audio jack. The XPS on the other hand has the same three Thunderbolt 4 ports and a micro SD slot. The Mac is able to charge over MagSafe, which frees up all the ports. The XPS only has USB-C, meaning you're actually limited to just two ports while charging. This won't be a problem if you use a dock, but when on the go, you'll be limited with what you can use. You'll definitely be using the XPS on a charger far more often than the Mac because battery life really doesn't come close. I don't have specific numbers, but in my case, the Mac has been lasting easily an extra two hours doing the exact same work. Now, I make use of the Mac's HDMI port quite a lot while traveling, and it's unfortunately completely absent here. The webcams on both though are completely fine if you're just joining meetings, but neither are going to be good enough to film video. If I had to go with one, I'd definitely choose the Max though, as it has a more natural look. The same can be said for the microphones. I won't say the Max sounds amazing, but it's a clearer signature than the XPS's. So this is the MacBook Pro. Let me know what you think. Webcam is whatever, but I actually think the microphone is pretty decent for being a laptop microphone. So right now we're using the Dell XPS. Let me know how this sounds. Does this sound better, worse than the MacBook? I think it looks pretty good. Definitely gonna be good enough for any video calls that you want to do. Though, again, if you're just joining meetings, which I expect most of you need it for, both are completely fine. As for speakers, the Macs are significantly better, which wasn't much of a surprise to me, as Macs have always had incredibly good speakers. Now, in terms of raw computing power, both machines are great for my use cases, but what most of the decision really comes down to is which OS you prefer. For basic web browsing and light tasks, either will be fine, but when looking at a MacBook Pro or something like the XPS, it's probably because you're doing programming, video editing, 3D modeling, or something like that. I've been using Macs for years and I'm now at a point that I'm very comfortable using it and have found the workflow that works best for me. That said, if you're someone who's used to Windows and can complete their work fast on it, the XPS is a fantastic Windows laptop. For me, I found I still keep wanting to go back to the Mac just because certain things are easier. Now, I have a desktop PC solely for the purpose of gaming and find that most of the time that scratches my itch, but if you want to be gaming on the go or even just have a single machine you can work and play on, going for Windows is the obvious choice. The XPS isn't going to give you the best gaming performance, but for a light, on the go machine, it can still run casual games very well and be more than enough for chill gaming sessions where you don't care about maximizing your refresh rate. Especially with this OLED panel, games still look fantastic on here even at lower settings. Now when it comes to customization, Windows is by far the winner. There's tons of apps you can download to customize just about everything, whereas the choices on Mac are slightly more limited. So on Windows, I downloaded Start All Back to throw my sidebar onto the right and remove the bloat from the start menu. Another app I came across was Power Toys from Microsoft, which bundles together a ton of different useful utilities for work. My favorite of all of them is Power Toys Run, which is similar to Spotlight or Raycast and lets you search apps and files on your machine. There are extensions for it, but you have to download these manually compared to the built-in store for Raycast. Other than that, they have a global color picker, Stay Awake, a text extractor similar to Text Sniper, Quick Peek, and a ton more. Now, to have a Windows development environment that's more similar to what I'm used to, I download WSL and I can't believe I didn't start doing this sooner. Installing only took a couple of minutes and it allowed me to use my same Zish config with oh my Zish and install packages through Brew. This significantly speeded up my web development experience and makes it more than good enough to code with. One of the only things I really miss for Mac is the menu bar because there's some really cool apps that are nice to have quick access to. The main one is my 
my upcoming calendar events, but weather and Etsy Cal giving me a nice drop down calendar is another. There's also some apps like Screen Studio that aren't on Windows at all, or ones like Arc where the Mac version is still a little better. Overall though, I think both the M3 Pro and XPS are great laptops, and what you go for largely depends on the work you do and your OS preferences. Let me know what you think down below, and if you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next where I go deep into what my development setup has looked like on the XPS. Thanks for watching and take care.